and it was so weird. I'm saying to myself, am I ever going to get my, my memory back? So the book goes through all those kind of things that the, that person you know, who had heart surgery or was going to have heart surgery or members of the family, I don't know what to expect if they read the book. Um, I'd walk to the 7-Eleven, and uh, I'd just start crying uncontrollably because your emotions, they, they say because of the shock to the system, when you have your, uh, when you have your operation, all the drugs and everything, it just, your natural chemical balance is, so, is thrown so way off, you can't even fix things. I used to walk to the 7-Eleven, I had to come back home, because I was crying uncontrollably for no reason at all. But now, you know, I, I cry only when it's, when it's necessary, like when the Yankees lose, or we, so what advice would you give somebody to avoid getting into this situation, to take care of their heart? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, Evan, uh, when, you, when, I, when I just mentioned the Yankees, I was good for literally, during the Yankee game, eating a pint of hog and dog ice cream, pretzels, dips, onion dip, soda, I mean, cut down... 90% of that. Now, I, I sat quintuple bypass, and I'm still good for every once in a while, a pint of hagen dazs or some pretzels, but you really, really have to just cut things out. And as you get a little older, I'm 58, as you get a little older, you know, you really, I don't want to sound like my parents, but you do have to watch the things you eat, and you need to exercise, and, you know, don't get all the, all the crap off you, too. Stress plays a big part in, in heart problems, by the way. Uh, and I wanted to mention uh, you had uh, Solomon on before and uh, you know you mentioned I'm going to be on at 6.30 well I'm, I'm happy to be his warm up back so to speak but I'm going to make an announcement to the world if you don't mind that it, all your listeners sure. around the world I'm going to have I'm going to have with me as I do my book reading uh, a special musical accompanist and you know no really? his, name, his, his name is Roy Dole and he is a very accomplished ukulele player. Ukulele is making a big com comeback now, as you know. And we're going to do a little uh, Steve Allen, Jack Kerouac. We're going to throw that at them for, for a segment or two. I, I realize many of your younger listeners have no idea who Steve Allen and Jack Kerouac are, but uh, we're going to really have a lot of fun with it. So uh, I hope people come out and get this as they get ready for the great film festival from your friend Solomon. And, uh, See them around 6.32. That's right. And that, once again, that's 16 West 8th in the heart of New York's legendary Greenwich Village, Gizzy, G-I-Z-Z-I-S, Gizzy's Cafe. And um, Steve, you know, nothing goes better with uh, ukulele than uh, quintuple bypasses, so this should be magic. <laughs> you know? now, I, don't think that I thought maybe somehow, I, you know, I, I have some wire that's forever going to be entirely keeping my uh, ribcage together. You know, maybe, uh, what are there, four strings on a ukulele? I'm not even sure, but I'm thinking maybe Lloyd can use, you know, one or two of those wires to make five and six strings, and we'll get a real kind of collaboration going that night. But you're right, couldn't couple five past ukulele, how can, you, how can you pass this up? That's a, you just can't go wrong. So we want everybody <laughs> to, to show up next Friday night. Once again, that's April 27th, and that's 6.30 sharp, folks. So come on down. There's going to be a book reading, and Steve's going to be accompanied by a ukulele. Great. This should be... Uh, a bunch of my brother's illustrations that he had in the book. I blew a little bunch of those up. Really uh, good, funny illustrations, good. so... Uh, so it sounds like a lot of fun. And, and Cooley, we have, a, we have a few more minutes left. If you have any questions... I'm sorry about that. Um, well, the one thing that I was curious about was uh, after your uh, after your surgery, what was I know you know the advice to take it easy and that sort of thing, and to moderate your health or your your diet, so to speak, as you mentioned earlier. Now, what is one of the craziest things? One of the most wildest things that you've done that was like a really pure adrenaline rush up for you? Since the surgery, <laughs> but, you know, I'll tell you. Let me let me go back. Uh, the last day in the hospital. I'm going to lead up to this. Last day in the hospital. This real young physical therapist with the velour suit comes into my room. Shows, come on, let's go uh, walk some stairs. So 
So, okay, so we go to walk down the flight of stairs. She goes, very good. Now, at that time, I could only go one foot on one stair, next foot on the same step, like that, for about maybe three or four weeks. So she said, now, we're going to walk up the flight of stairs, which I hadn't done yet. I'd only done, like, that little three-step up, three-step down, yeah, that they have in the hospital. So I walked up the whole flight of stairs, and about halfway up, this therapist, this young therapist, by the way, I had to check with my wife. She said it's okay if I describe the therapist as a young therapist. But she says, uh, you know, rule of thumb is once you can complete a full flight of stairs, you can engage in light sexual activity. I was fell back down the stairs, you know. So I made it to the top of the stairs. I, you know, I was going to make some kind of a joke like, well, you know, time for light sexual activity. She's already walking to the nurse's station, walking right on her little clipboard. And here I am with my droopy pajama bottoms. I got to walk myself back to the bed. But the craziest thing I've done since, I was actually, I'm actually able to start jogging again. Cool. I used to do that. As a matter of fact, that's how I realized I had a problem because I had some chest pain. So I'm back to jogging two or three miles, maybe four days a week. Uh, I know it doesn't sound like it's too crazy, but when you think of where I was, it's yeah. pretty amazing to me anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's just a testament to say that life goes on, and it's not the end of the world with something like that, because uh, a lot of people are very scared about, you know, anything having to do with putting a knife next to your heart. <laughs> and, uh, and you know what? I'll tell you. What got me through a lot of it was, and I'm not just saying this because you're a guest, is music. I mean, music music seems to be the universal medicine for people. I mean, right. it would calm me when I was in a good mood, I'd put on a certain CD, but music just seems to make everybody feel better if you're in a bad mood. Sometimes it brings you down more, you know, depending on the song, but I mean, music is, is everything to me. Music can, uh, you know... What can I say? That's really what, what helped me get through this music. So. music. Music is a powerful force in society. Thank you I, very I much think it's probably time. the most, as in love, the, probably the two most powerful forces we have. There you yeah. go. And anyway, Steve, we must wrap it up, so please give the listeners all the details how they can check out your book. Okay, well, it's real simple. I have a website, CCU Book. That's the letter CCU for cardiac care. You know, CCU Book.com. All the information is on that website. I have my Twitter account, Facebook, email, how they can buy a book. If they'd like, uh, if they'd like, I'll the Facebook. I mean, I'll find a book for them. Just uh, send me an email when they go to my website. But everything they need to know is on ccubook.com. There you go, Steve Ludwig. We're looking forward to hearing you next week at Gizzy's, and I want all my listeners to support this book. And if you have any family members that have had heart issues or any friends or coworkers or whatever the case may be, this sounds like an ideal gift. So uh, please show some support. And, uh, Steve, thank you so much for appearing on Legends Radio. Really appreciate it. I, it was my pleasure. It was great talking to both of you. Thank you so much.